Yo, what's going on YouTube individuals and DBZ enthusiasts out there? This is your boy RBG, aka The Random Black Gamer, coming back at you with another Dragon Ball Xenoverse news update slash analogy video. We waited a great deal of time to get more intel on the roster, the bosses, the character creation features, and the music. And now we're in luck. I've taken time to accumulate two main interviews from Dragon Ball Xenoverse's leading developer, Masayuki Hirano. These interviews were provided by YouTube users J Patrol and the legendary DBZ enthusiast himself, Nostro Trevax. The links to the original videos will be in the description box below, but with further ado, let's get right into it. First and foremost, I would like to say that although Masayuki's translator is speaking to the interviewers in English and in French, his native language is still Japanese. Sometimes it's difficult having a back and forth conversation when there are a lot of words and concepts that don't have a direct correlation in Japan. Also keep in mind that the questions given to Hirano are only as good as the translator conveys and translates from English to Japanese with the best of his abilities. But I think I've managed to get all the answers I needed. I will elaborate on things to keep the hype going. The first question that was asked was if players could look forward to seeing multiple giant boss battles, since we've seen the Great 8 Vegeta in scans and in recent release trailers. This particular question made Hirano and his translator chuckle. They always seem to be doing this when they ask good questions. Hirano stated that in Xenoverse, the players can expect to see giant boss battles in the story mode and in quest mode if they desire to team up with friends and level grind for more experience points. He also answered a question regarding the recently released trailer at this year's Jump Festa. It featured Great 8 Vegeta and another Ozara who viewers assumed to be either Nappa or Raditz. According to Hirano, it's none other than Nappa. I pretty much assumed the Great 8 was Nappa based off of his outward appearance. Although he and Raditz sport similar models of Saiyan armor, there are obvious color and accessory differences. If you notice, Nappa wears armor that consists of color schemes such as a solid black and yellow, while Raditz sports black armor with brown shoulder guards. I would also like to add that Raditz has bands around his left leg and arm, but the ape in the Jump Festa trailer doesn't. The next question revolves around a scan published by the V-Jump magazine featuring a customizable Namekian in what seems to be a giant form or transformation. It goes on asking if the Namek will have a transformation similar to that of a Super Saiyan transformation. Hirano answered that there will be no giant Namekian transformation. The player will only have the option to alter their custom Namekian size. I think there was a lot of misunderstanding regarding that particular Namekian scan. Players familiar with the recently released beta probably remember wielding the ability to give their Namekian an athletic or super build, which I think a lot of fans got confused with the giant form. It's a bit of a letdown considering we've seen a form similar to this one in the non-canon film Lord Slug, but I've got a feeling that the heads at Dimps has something else in store for the Namekian fans. The next question up is if the story mode will include the three main Dragon Ball GT arcs, which features villains such as Baby, Super 17, and Omega Shinron. Hirano replied that the main focus would be on the Dragon Ball Z arcs, but that they're discussing ways to implement GT characters into the story. He mentions that they'll still be accessible in other ways such as local and online matches. I have a feeling that if we don't get the implementation of GT characters in the main story mode, we'll still see them in the side missions and quest mode. In previous games, we've seen the GT saga integrated after beating the story mode the first time around, adding replay value to an already awesome game such as Budokai 3. Next up on our list of questions is how many playable characters will there be in Xenoverse, excluding the ones we can create. Once again, Hirano and his translator give a sarcastic chuckle. He stated that he recorded the current number they have now, but at the moment he can't give out the specifics. But he goes on to say that there'll be a wide variety to choose from, and that the viewers should do the mouth based on all the recent trailers and confirmed info. I can honestly say with all the character scans we've received along with all the leaked character creation info we got from YouTube user Sergio M3, I'm satisfied with what we've been given. Whatever character doesn't make the cut can simply be created or later be released as DLC. I'm also interested in seeing some of the Dragon Ball Online schematics integrated up in Xenoverse. Next question up is how many stages will Xenoverse feature? Hirano simply replied that more than 20 stages would be featured. Based on research, we have the Rocky Area, Planet Namek, Ruin Planet Namek, Cell Games Arena, Supreme Kai's Planet, the Time Storage Vault, Toki Toki City, Hell, the Hyperbolic Time Chamber, Urban Arena, the City Ruins, the Islands, Space, the Plains, Master Roshi's House, Kami's Lookout, and the World Martial Arts Tournament stage. The next question revolves around the live stream we recently received by Bandai Namco. Within the stream, we've noticed Frieza's forms were separate characters instead of the transformations, and that two forms were missing. Would that be the final build? Hirano-san answered that Frieza's race or accessories will be different from the Saiyans and they will not have transformations, but they'll be separated into different categories. 
Once again, I have to stress how disappointed I am in the character creation features regarding the Frieza race. I think fans will agree that it would have been fun level grinding to make my character just as mysterious yet surprisingly powerful after transforming like Frieza did in the series. But moving on, hirano san was asked if we could expect to see the new characters and outfits from the recently announced Frieza's Resurrection movie set to be released later this year. Hirano replied that these things haven't been fixed yet, but after the announcement, Demps will try their hardest to give the fans what they want, but it's only if the demand is high enough. Since Xenoverse's announcement, Bandai Namco has been responding to all the DBZ fans to make sure Xenoverse is marked in history with the Budokai and Tenkaichi games. When we asked for GT characters, they gave them to us, and when we asked for Xenoverse to be featured on the PC, Bandai Namco answered our prayers. So it's safe to say if the fans keep conversing with the developers, we can get the DBZ game we dreamt of. The next question we have is if our created Saiyan character will be able to turn into Super Saiyan 2 and Super Saiyan 3. Hirano stated that the player's character will wield the ability to transform into Super Saiyan 2, but they won't be able to ascend to Super Saiyan 3. If you ask from my perspective, I'm satisfied with this news, and I can sort of see why my character won't be able to achieve SSJ3. If you're familiar with the story and timeline of Dragon Ball Online, it takes place 1000 years after Goku's departure with Oob. The humans have become crossbred with the Saiyan race, so the bloodlines have become somewhat diluted. But many believe that the race holds a powerful hidden potential due to their part Saiyan lineage. So it sort of makes sense that they wouldn't be able to reach that level like a full-blooded Saiyan did such as Goku. The last question asks is if players will be able to create an android race similar to Cell. Hirano mentioned that you won't be able to create an android race, but you can make your human character look similar to one by modifying the hairstyle and eyes. The next question comes from YouTube user Nostro Trevax's interview. Most of the questions asked in this interview have recently been answered and confirmed, but I thought I'd elaborate on them anyway for those viewers out of the know. So without further ado, let's dive right into it. The first question is regarding the beta test released in October. The beta's purpose was to check the network and the servers, but we want to know if notes were taken in regards to the fans critiquing of the gameplay. Hirano answered that overall the goal was to make sure the servers would be able to maintain with a huge number of players, and that it's been difficult to evaluate the gameplay feedback. But nonetheless, they've been taking notes on some of the critiques that have been shared with them, and they're working around the clock to improve certain gameplay mechanics. So if you've been keeping up with the different variations of gameplay since Japan Expo 2014, the gameplay mechanics have changed drastically. The character combos and movements don't look so botched. Another thing that I've noticed is that the lock-on system that players have been griping about has been done away with in one-on-one -on -one battles. It really didn't make sense to have it unless there were multiple characters on the screen, so it's safe to say that Dimps is in fact listening to us. The next question up is how many GT characters will be included in Xenoverse? Hirano replied that they supplied us with the Super Saiyan 4s after we requested them and that we can expect more over the time of Xenoverse's development. So this is pretty old news. So far we've gotten confirmation of SS4 of Goku, Super Android 17, and Super Saiyan 4 of Vegeta as pre-order DLC. I'm hoping characters like General Rildo, Legic, and all the Shadow Dragons will be implemented into the story mode or at least be playable. The next question asked is if we could expect to see Dragon Ball characters such as Demon King Piccolo and Kid Goku. Hirano replied that it's not on their schedule and it's because in the series most of the characters can't fly. He also goes on to say that in Xenoverse they want the players to enjoy moving in the air and that's why they didn't add those characters. To be honest, I find this to be a lame excuse. There have been past instances where these characters were added regardless of their credentials. We've seen Kid Goku and almost the entire Dragon Ball cast in Budokai Tenkaichi 3, and Dimps even added Kid Goku in Budokai 3 and in Infinite World. At this point, there's no excuse that these characters can't be implemented. The next question correlates to the previous question, and that's if their excuse is that they can't add Kid Goku or any other Dragon Ball characters because of their inability to fly, then what's their excuse for adding Mr. Satan to the roster without his jetpack? Hirano laughed and replied that they'll be working on this matter very soon. I think I have an idea why Mr. Satan's been added to the roster, and that's because he played a quintessential role in the Cell Saga. I would also like for you to take a look at the recent release Jump Festa trailer. You notice that the main antagonists, Toa and Mira, seem to be tampering with DBZ history by taking control of the villains' minds, and Mr. Satan just so happens to be one of them, so maybe being controlled by the Demon Masters will give him more strength and the newfound ability to fly. Next question is in regards to the beam struggles. Fans have noticed in the beta that the beams don't clash when performed simultaneously. Hirano states that they haven't had a lot of time to think about it yet, but they've had a lot of requests to add it. So far the beams cancel each other out if they're equal in power. 
but if one beam's power is greater than the other, it can blast right through it. To tell you guys the truth, I sort of like it this way. In past instances, beam struggles revolved around the player's physical prowess, which is physical strength, speed, and accuracy. This time around, it'll revolve solely on your created character skill statistics. Next question asks about the mysterious Sailor Wet at the Japan Expo and if the players could get a little intel on him. The only thing Hirano could mention is that the mystery villain is very important in Xenoverse, but it's still not time to reveal him yet. Next question up is that the recently revealed giant characters will be playable. Hirano simply replied that they couldn't answer the question. I'm hoping these giant characters will be playable like they were in the Tenkaichi series. Development team Spike went above and beyond providing us with canon and non-canon Saiyan apes. Next question asks, who will be the musical composer in Xenoverse? It's been noticed that controversial music composer Kenji Yamamoto's music was used up in October's beta release. Anyone familiar with Kenji's work knows he's received a lot of backlash after other productions discovered that he plagiarized their music in the Dragon Ball Kai series. It's also been discovered that he's copyrighted music during his production with the Budokai series. Songs such as Move Forward Fearlessly from Dragon Ball Budokai and Glory of the World performed by Stratovarius and other songs like Budokai 3's Embracing the Blue Sky along with Journey's Be Good to Yourself can easily be heard as similar songs. I'll provide the link in the description so you can hear it and compare the songs for yourself. Hirano answered and said the songs used in the beta testings were just temporary and not the definitive versions. There will most definitely be a new leading producer. So there you have it folks, all the latest news and analysis on Dragon Ball Xenoverse. If you made it all the way through, congratulations and thanks for watching. Please be sure to give this video a like or a dislike and share with your fellow DBZ fans. Also, to give an indication that you watched the video in all its entirety, I would like you to leave your thoughts in the comments section and type in hashtag Super Sandwich. And to stay further updated on Dragon Ball Xenoverse, subscribe. I'll talk to you guys later. Peace out.